Welcome to our September Northwoods Financial Series session. The Northwoods Financial Series is a free series we host at Park City Credit Union. Every month we have a different educational webinar. My name is Lisa Kraukramer. I am a member of the Park City Marketing Team and I will be your moderator. And I'm excited to introduce to you our presenter, Luke Pelger. Luke Pelger is a Partner Experience Manager with Green Path Financial Wellness. Green Path is a nonprofit organization with the mission to empower people to lead financially healthy lives. Since 2006, Luke has educated people on the topics of budgeting, credit reports, and managing debt. And welcome back to the Northwoods Financial Series, Luke. Luke had joined our series uh, earlier this year, back in February. He presented on how to be financially fit in 2021. If you want to catch that presentation, we've got a recording of it on our YouTube channel. Just search for Park City Credit Union on YouTube and you'll find it. So welcome, Luke, and I'll let you take things over. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa. Pleasure to be with you and, and with everyone today talking about this uh, highly um, um, uh, requested topic by, by lots of people talking about credit reports and scores because we all know the importance of credit reports and scores in our lives. We'll, we'll certainly touch upon that in our session today. Uh, and we'll talk about how credit works, what is it, how to build and maintain a, a score, basically use this tool to our advantage when it comes to some of the financial decisions that we, we make uh, in our lives. And there'll be time for questions too. So any questions along the way, we can certainly uh, answer those as well. So we're gonna be covering some tips today on building and maintaining your credit. We're gonna take some time to set the foundation uh, first before we get into the actual tips. So I'm going to keep you in suspense for a little bit about what these actual tips are, but we'll set a nice, nice foundation uh, for that as we, as we go forward. Uh, just briefly before we dive in, just so you have a, a, an awareness of who Green Path is, um, as Lisa mentioned, we're a nonprofit organization. Our mission, again, is empowering people to lead financially healthy lives. So we're here for members of the credit union. You can take advantage of our services to get a, a financial assessment just to review your situation. We also provide housing counseling, both pre-purchase education as well as, as well as foreclosure mitigation. We help people with credit questions. We do have uh, ability to look at your uh, credit report information and educate, educate you on that. And then we also have options for handling debt. So feel free to utilize our services for any of these needs that you might have. Certainly though, for the, uh, the credit re review education, and we'll talk about that uh, today. So know that Park City has your uh, financial wellness in mind by partnering with Green Path and with all the other uh, great products and services that they have. So with this topic of credit, why is credit so important? important. Well, we know that our credit report or our credit score impact lots of different areas of our lives. And so what are they? Well, obviously first with any loans or financing that we want to get, usually there's a credit check for, for getting that loan and financing to determine what's the risk, what rate might you pay uh, in, those, in those transactions. Some employment and job opportunities uh, take a look at your credit because uh, there could be an impact based on how your credit looks. If you're handling money or those sorts of things or in the financial industry and maybe other industries too, there may be credit checks that can impact employment. Obviously, if you're looking to rent an apartment, sorry for the typo there on the slide. If you're looking to rent an apartment, they're going to do a credit check uh, uh, before you rent the apartment. Also with utilities, um, many utilities may run a credit check just to see uh, what your credit looks like. Maybe they'd require a security deposit if, um, uh, depending on what your credit looks like before you get that utility. So lots of different areas uh, are impacted by our credit. So we need to know um, uh, what our credit score is or what our credit report looks like, what's being reported on our credit report, so that there are no surprises uh, when we go through life and, and take advantage of our credit with these different areas. We, we should know um, what's on our report, what to expect uh, with each of these situations where it may come up. So what is credit? Let's kind of start there. Um, why is credit so important as far as a, a tool? Well, credit is an agreement wherein someone receives goods or services now, and they're going to pay for it later. So uh, your credit just says, you know, what's your character or capacity or ability to um, to get this thing now, but also pay for it later. The person who's giving you that good or that service or that financing, that's their main question. 
uh, are you going to be able to to pay that back? And a credit is just an understanding of uh, your ability to do that. So it's it's two parties uh, coming to that particular agreement. So in the world of uh, personal finances, the tool that's uh, really abounding right now, as far as uh, you know, assessing someone's credit, is a credit report, which is simply just uh, a, a report that compiles information about how you handle credit and debt accounts. So it's just going to take the mortgage, the car loan, the student loan, the credit cards, whatever credit or debt accounts that you have, they're all being compiled on what's called a credit report. And it's just listing the information of those particular accounts. So what type of account is it? How much do you owe? How's your payment history? We'll actually look at that in just a moment as far as what that looks like. So a credit report just compiles this information. A credit score takes all that information from the credit report and it expresses that credit history as a number. So the higher the credit score, the better. Um, but a credit score is just a, a, a reflection of what's on the credit report. So this is important when people say, I want to improve my credit score, that's good, but we're not looking to just improve a score. What we're doing is we want to improve the information on the credit report so that when our credit score is calculated, we get the better number, right? So we're gonna to talk today about what's reported on your credit report so that you can, um, when it comes to building or, or, or uh, establishing or maintaining your good credit score, it's all the information on the report that, that plays into that. So we'll talk about how that all ties together. One thing I will say, a credit score is not a financial health score, right? So this is just a general personal uh, financial wellness that I wanna, this, this key point I want you to take away. Definitely get the best credit score that you can. Um, that, that's, that's certainly something we would never discourage. Get the best credit score that you can, but also know a high credit score doesn't mean you necessarily have great financial health, You want, but you do wanna have both, right? So if you do the right financial wellness practices, right? You've got a budget, you're saving, you're making good buying decisions, you're paying bills on time, that good financial health can contribute to a good credit score. But just because you have a good credit score doesn't necessarily mean you have good financial health or financial wellness. So. Um, do separate those in your mind a little bit. We want to get, get the great score, but also make sure we're doing all the habits along with that uh, to make sure we have good financial wellness with that. So there are three major credit bureaus in the United States, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You as a consumer are able to get access to all three of these reports um, at least every year. Right now, uh, during the, the COVID pandemic, we actually have the ability to get it every week uh, if we need to. Um, but we as consumers have the right to review this information that's being compiled. And these three credit reporting agencies, all they do is they collect the information sent to them. So all of your creditors um, typically report to one or all of these three uh, credit bureaus. So when you're reviewing your credit report from one of these three credit bureaus, you're just seeing the information that's sent to them from the creditors that are reporting that information. So you as a consumer, it is important that you do take time to review all three of your credit reports to understand what's being reflected on each report, uh, understand what those trade lines are, make sure it's accurate. We'll talk through that a little bit today as well. But just, you know, there are three separate credit uh, bureau reports and you as a consumer want to review all three. The information that's reported on these reports, uh, there are four major areas. First is identifying information. Information for you as an individual, name, address, social security number, date of birth, just basic identifying information. This helps the credit bureaus line up the, the credit information with the correct credit profile. So that's going to identify you. Second is uh, credit uh, information or account information. So these are the actual accounts that you have or trade lines that you have, the mortgage, the car loan, the credit card, et cetera. This is very important. Your identifying information does not play into your credit score. You do wanna check it for accuracy though. Uh, the trade line information or the credit or account information does play into your credit score. So it is important that you know uh, these reports, you, or, uh, these accounts, you become familiar with them. That's going to play a, a big factor in your uh, in your credit score. The third uh, thing that's reported are uh, negative things like bankruptcies or collection accounts. So uh, if you do have those, those will be listed on the credit report. And then fourth is inquiries or inquiries, depending on how you like to pronounce that. And those are uh, polls on your credit. So why is your credit being reviewed? 
and, and um, uh, who is doing that. So a hard pull, for example, is when you apply for a loan or apply for a credit card. You're applying in order to get something like a trade line or, or to get a credit card or some type of financing or take on debt. A hard pull can have some impact on your score because there's risk or obligation tied to you submitting that application and the company looking at your credit report as a result of that. We can contrast that though with a soft pull. A soft pull is where you review your own credit report. There's no harm in doing so. It's not going to hurt your score when you pull your own, your own credit report. There's no risk or obligation for you just to view your own information or a soft pull could also be your existing creditors. They may look into your credit to see if they want to offer you other products or services. You did not initiate that look into your credit, so that does not impact your score. That's considered a soft pull uh, as well. So know that whenever a hard pull is taking place on your report, that's an inquiry that may have an impact on your score. We'll look at how much of an impact that'll be a little bit later when we look at how a credit score uh, is calculated. Things that are not uh, included or listed on your credit report, your income, your assets, your savings, none of these things are listed on your credit report. So this goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Your credit score is not a reflection of your overall financial health. And you can understand this if you've been through the process of applying for a loan and especially something like a mortgage. What do they ask you for in addition to getting your credit report? Well, let's see some pay stub. Let's look at your, your work history. Let's look at your, your assets and savings that you have because those things aren't reported on the credit report. They want to, the lender wants to get that full picture of your financial well-being as part of that application process. So these things do not impact your score, uh, but again, do focus on, you know, having a steady income, having some assets or savings just to build your overall uh, financial health. Now, if you've never seen how um, uh, how a credit report looks or ever reviewed your credit report, I'm just going to share one example of the information shown on your credit report to see what it looks like. This is a general example. Credit reports could look a little bit different based on, on how they list the information, but the information is um, consistent across the board as far as what they're reporting. So, for example, your personal information on your, uh, on your credit report is going to give your name as well as variations of your name, right? So if you go by a nickname, Mike versus Michael, right? Maybe there's, that's showing up, uh, those variations on how you uh, submitted an application. Social security number, date of birth, potentially employer information, right? You're typically putting that on um, some some financing applications. They'll show the, the, the employers. Just make sure this information is accurate. Um, there's nothing in here that, that's not familiar to you. If you do see something that's not familiar, that could be an indication of identity theft. So do make sure that you look into that if you need to and um, you know, dispute that or, or get it reviewed to make sure there's not someone trying to apply for things uh, in your name. So review this for accuracy. A second section is the, again, the credit accounts or the account information itself. So we're just going to take, again, this is a sample. So it's going to give the, the name of the creditor. It's going to give the address of the creditor, the account number, or typically it's just a portion of the account number showing the type of account that you have. So is it an installment loan like a car loan or is it a revolving account like a credit card where you can charge it up and pay it down charge it up and pay it down that's what makes it a revolving account an installment account like a car loan is you borrow that set amount of money and you're paying it down until it's paid down to zero so you're paying in installments until it's paid down to zero a third type could be mortgage right so it's telling us the type of, of uh, uh, account that it is the terms as far as the monthly payment the amount of months that you have to pay on this account also who's responsible for this account is it just you as an individual or did someone sign with you say did a spouse sign with you and it's um, joint responsibility well it's on your credit report and that other signers uh, credit report. That's important to know um, as far as you know where this information is reporting on people's credit reports. It's going to give the um, you know credit limits or or original amounts that were borrowed on a particular loan, so it can see you know have you charged up on a revolving account to the limit uh, or um, you know, what is the limit on that particular account or on an installment account? Where did you start as far as your balance and are you paying that down? So all these things are going to come into the, the credit scoring model. It also looks at your payment history. 
Are you paying on time consistently? Have you been at any point 30 days past due or 60 days past due or 90 days past due? A lot of this gets reflected in your, your credit score. So review the trade lines for, for two things. One, um, you know, accuracy of the information, right? If I made a payment and I've always been up to date, but it's saying I'm 30 days past due, I wanna make sure I get that corrected because I don't want that impacting my score. Also review it for accuracy. If you see an account that's not familiar to you, did someone get your information and they open an account in your name? Let's dispute that, let's research that. Again, maybe it could be identity theft and we need to look into that further. So make sure you're looking at your trade lines um, you know, as well as your personal information to, to check for accuracy. So we're not gonna get into a, a deep, deep dive into how to read a credit report, but hopefully this gives you just a general idea you know, if it's your first time looking at this information, once you get your own credit report, you at least have some familiarity of, of what to look for there. Now, a way to get your free credit report is through annualcreditreport.com. Uh, again, as a consumer, you have the right to view your credit report. And it's very easy to do if you've never done this. Uh, very simple, you go to annualcreditreport.com. It's a secure website. You could also, uh, there is a phone number on the site where you could call in and get your credit report over the phone and have them send it to you or um, an address where you could write in and request your credit report. But if you're doing it online, it's as simple as you fill out a form. Again, name, address, date of birth, social security number, residences. Um, you pick which credit reports you want. You can choose one at a time or you could choose to review all three at the same time. That's up to you. And then you request and review the reports online. There may be some verification questions um, to make sure you're the person uh, that's, that's submitting the form, matches the, uh, the information that you've entered. You can typically get the report online within a few minutes, and that typically stays active for, I believe, 60 days in, in most cases. So you can come back to it later on uh, if you needed to. Normally, uh, with, with annualcreditreport.com, uh, um, you normally can get a copy of each of the three national credit bureaus once every 12 months. But where we are currently, you know, with, with the COVID-19 pandemic, they are allowing you to actually uh, view it every week. You can view your credit report every week. Um, and that's just because a lot of people are going through, you know, deferments or forbearance, that sort of thing. So this allows people to keep a closer eye on their, their reports and the information that's being reported there. But simple, easy way to get, um, you know, copies of your credit reports, review that information, and just understand it uh, as a consumer. Because again, to improve our score, what do we need to improve? The information on the credit reports. We wanna see the information that's reporting there. Now let's transition to you know that information that's on the report. How does it get into a score? How does that number come to be from the information on our credit report? Well, a credit score is simply a three digit number. It's trying to determine what's your likelihood of repayment or what's the risk of giving you this good or service or this credit. Um, what's the likelihood of you, you being able to repay that or, or maintain payments on something. The most common type of credit score is a FICO score. So we'll focus on that for, for how we look at the scoring model today. Uh, there are others out there, but they follow a very similar, uh, very similar um, uh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Very similar model as far as how they typically score things. The FICO score ranges from a low of 300 to a high of 850, and the higher the score, uh, the better. So what are the five factors in a FICO credit score? Let's go through them one by one. So number one, most important factor in a credit score is payment history. This is 35% of your credit score. So make sure you're paying on time, make sure you're paying the full minimum payment that you should pay every month. Why is this the most important factor? Well, it's gonna tell uh, a lender, for example, what does a lender wanna know uh, most importantly when they're gonna give you some money? How likely are you to pay me back? Well, the best reflection of that is, how have you done that with other people? And so the, the payment history is the most important factor uh, in a credit score. Second biggest factor, is the amount owed or the debt to credit ratio. This is 30% of your score. So the uh, we'll look at it in two ways. Number one, the debt to credit ratio. So let's say you have a credit card, a thousand dollar limit on that credit card. You're borrowing or your average balance on that or your balance at the end of the month when they calculate it is $900 of that thousand dollar credit limit. That's a 90% debt to credit ratio. Does that look good? 
typically not, right? The question is going to be, why do you have to borrow up to the max? Can you not afford to pay that payment down? Or are you depending on the card? So with your debt to credit ratio, the, the credit score is going to look at what is your, you know, what is the, the limit on your card or the limits on all your cards together? And what are your balances? Ideally, what you want to do is keep those balances as low as possible. Keep as much available credit available uh, because that could illustrate, hey, I'm able to pay things on time or pay things in full. Um, so it's, it's less of a risk than someone that's carrying a constant balance on those accounts. Second way to look at this is on something like an installment account. So you've got a, a car loan that's $20,000. You start making payments and after a few years, it's now down to you know $13,000. Year after that, it's down to $8,000, right? So it's looking at the spread between the original balance and the balance where you are today. The wider that gap gets, the less risk there is because there's less debt for you to pay with each each payment that you make. So the lower those balances are or the bigger that, that spread is, the better it looks. So you just wanna keep paying down your balances on those installment accounts. So that's 30% of your score. Again, why is this a big factor? Because it speaks to, are you actually paying down the balances? Are you um, needing to use the credit, right? That could be a risk if you're using it too much. So that's a big factor in your score because that debt represents an obligation that you have to handle, right? The less obligations you have, the less risk you are to a lender that's trying to, to lend to you. Third factor is length of credit history, 15% of your score. So this you can really not do anything about other than let time pass. But uh, all else being equal, someone with a longer established credit history looks a little better than someone with a shorter established credit history. So not much you can do there other than start establishing the credit and let over time that, that uh, length of credit history grow. Next fa factor is uh, new credit or uh, these are the hard polls on your credit, the hard inquiries on your credit. So how often are you applying for credit and how often are you being granted that new credit? Uh, so what we say here, don't apply for too much too often, right? If you're applying for a lot of credit cards at the same time, well, it's going to be more risky, right? Uh, because there's, again, more risk or more obligation if you do get granted those particular accounts. But new credit, again, it's only 10% of your score. So you can apply for cards here and there or open an account here and there. Just don't, don't do it too much uh, or too often. Just only do it as you need to. The neat thing about this with... Um, with uh, you know, looking for a home or shopping for a car. Sometimes you're shopping rates or getting rates from, you know, from different places. People are checking your credit. Typically with shopping for a mortgage or for a car, if it's done within a certain period of time, I believe it's, you know, 30 days for an auto loan or 60 days for a mortgage. I don't know the exact numbers offhand, but typically within a certain period of time, the scoring model will pick up that you're uh, getting your, your credit checked for the purpose of a mortgage or for the purpose of a car loan. And typically within those windows, they'll count it as one pull on the credit as opposed to a pull for each uh, situation. So if you're looking to get the best rate, certainly do that. If you do it within a short window, it's typically not going to hurt your credit too much. It'll just show as one pull uh, on the credit. And then the last factor is the types of credit that you have and the risk of that the, that credit or debt that you have. So let me give you an example. If I said to you, I have $200,000 in debt, um, am I a risky uh, borrower or am I not a risky borrower? Well, you need more information, right? If I said, I've got $200,000 in credit card debt, it's all unsecured, probably pretty risky, right? As opposed to, I've got $200,000 in debt and it's all secured by a mortgage. Right, that's that's a little bit different risk risk profile. So this just looks at: Do you have multiple types of account? What types of debt do you have? Um, it's better to have a credit card and a car loan, or a credit card and a mortgage, as opposed to just a credit card. So if you're able to manage multiple types of credit, that usually looks good. But I like to say you don't have to go out and borrow on a car just to improve your, your types of credit being used if you don't need to. Um, just be smart with what you have, right? The types of credit that you have. Use what you have well, you'll be just fine. Uh, and then when it comes time to apply for the car loan or apply for the mortgage, if that's the next step in your situation, You'll do just fine if you just just manage those accounts uh, as you get them. So those are the five factors in a credit score. Payment history, amounts owed, length of credit history, 
new, uh, new credit and types of credit being used. Now, if I've done my job right, if I've explained this well enough, I'm gonna to go to the next slide and we're gonna talk about uh, improving and maintaining a score. If I were to ask you, um, based on the information we've talked about already today, how would you improve or maintain a score? What things should you do in order to do that? You might be thinking about them already, right? Well, what's the most important factor in a credit score? Pay on time. So first thing we can do to improve and maintain a score, if we, if we have established credit, Pay your accounts on time. That's the most important thing that we can do. Second best thing we can do, it's also the second biggest factor in the score. Keep your balances low and keep paying down those balances. Most experts say, and you know, this number can vary based on your source, but if you have a revolving account like a credit card, try and keep the balance to below, you know, 30% of the available credit. That's kind of a first benchmark. If you can get below one third of the available credit on that account, that's good. And then just keep paying down from there. Keep it as low as possible. So keep your balances low, just keep paying down your balances. And the number three, uh, apply for uh, and open new accounts only as needed. So if you've got established credit already, you're looking to um, you know, improve that score. You're looking to, to make sure you keep that good score if you've already got a good score. These are the, I'll put it in air quotes, the secrets of credit. There really are no secrets, right? All this information is public information. We all know uh, what lenders are looking for. Lenders are very open about what they're looking for. Pay on time, keep paying down what you owe, and don't go out there applying for too much because that may look a little bit risky. If you do these three things consistently, that's the hard part, right? Doing it consistently because circumstances in life can kind of throw some, some things in the mix that we don't expect. But if you can do these th three things right consistently, you're 90% of the way there of having a great credit score, maintaining a good credit score. And it's a factor of just doing it consistently over time, right? And, and maintaining that uh, for, the, for the long haul as best you can. So there's no secrets to credit. So, so um, you know, hopefully you take that as a takeaway. Let's just pay on time, keep balances low, uh, and only apply for things as we need to. So that's one aspect of our topic today is how do we maintain our score? How can we improve the score if we already have that established credit? And then another focus of, of today is, is how do we establish and build credit? Maybe you're in a situation where you've got a, you know, either no accounts or maybe just one account. You're kind of thinking, how do I best, you know, improve my, my, my credit situation or get a stronger credit profile uh, for the future? Well, let me give you some tips on that too. First, have a great relationship with the credit union, right? Just having a checking or savings account, you know, doesn't report on your credit report. Um, but what it does, well, what is credit? It's where um, someone understands your ability to get something now and pay for it later. Well, that relationship that you have with the credit union, if you're managing your accounts well, if you're saving uh, money, that builds some of that, that credibility and character uh, with the credit union. And that helps you establish the relationship in which they can offer you something, even if you have a thinner or, or maybe no credit at all uh, altogether. So make sure you have a strong relationship there and just manage the accounts you already have first to show that you're able, able to do that. And then second, uh, it sounds obvious, but let's give you some, some finer points here. You have to actually establish a line of credit, right? So you have to have something showing uh, or something established that's going to show on your credit report. So what are the things that would show on a credit report? Well, if you have student loans, student loans report on your credit reports. So that's something that's that you may not be thinking of, but those are reporting on your credit report. But things like a car loan, a mortgage, those report too, but you may not be in a position for those things yet. Well, let's start with the small things, a credit card, right? If you're able to get a credit card, uh, low low credit limit, you can start to build credit even through a low low credit limit credit card, right? Um, and that's where it's unsecured. You're basically just signing on the dotted line and, and saying, I promise I'll use the card and pay it back on time. Um, so that's a good way to start. If you can get just a regular credit card, uh, start using that. And I'll give you some, some tips on how to use that card appropriately. Secured credit cards. Now, if you're in a position where, um, you know, the, the the lender wants to secure that 
that credit card a little bit, they may ask, hey, we'll give you a $250 limit credit card, but we want you to put down $250. We'll hold on to it. We'll secure the credit card with that $250. And then once you have a true uh, proven track record of, of managing that account, maybe they'll transition you to you know, a traditional uh, credit card. Secured credit cards, though, report just like any other credit card on your credit report. So that can be a great way to start building uh, building that credit with less risk to uh, the lender, you know, less risk to you because you've already put that money aside and secured the card with that. Uh, any type of loan uh, that you might need, whether it's a personal loan or a car loan, maybe you're in a position to get a car loan, um, that'll start to establish your credit as you start to make payments on that loan. So whether it's a, a small loan or whether it's a big loan, doesn't matter, establishing that, that account, paying on time, uh, that'll that'll be a good thing. And then any credit building products. A lot of um, financial institutions have credit building products, you know, special programs to help people um, you know, build that credit with a tool that's going to be reporting or, or a, a product that's going to be reporting to the credit report. So, um, you know, you can seek that out specifically by that term. Do you have a credit building product? Uh, there are typically lots of products out there to help uh, help with that. And then with establishing credit, once we establish that, that, that account, whatever it might be, we have to make sure we use that credit wisely and focus on the timely payment. So even once you establish that trade line, it's not the end of the ball game. You gotta make sure you're, you're using it wisely, paying things on time and being smart about the use of that account. Cause what it could be, if you don't do that, you get the credit, you get the credit line, let's say a credit card, you miss a payment in the first two months. Well, now it's looking not so great on your credit report. You're gonna have to, you know, try and, you know, better that situation. So as you go into the process of thinking about what products could I use to establish my credit, be smart about it. Start small. Don't get in over your head. Um, you know, we all want to be positive and think we can do more than than we we normally can. Just be just be realistic about, hey, you know, if I've never used a credit card before. Let me just start with a small limit. Let's make sure I'm not tempted to overspend here or something along those lines. So use those those credit lines wisely. Make sure you're paying things on time and being smart about it overall. So let me give you a tip, especially in that in that vein of what we can do there. So let's say you're able to get a credit card, you know, traditional card or, or secured credit card. One thing I'd recommend there um, is use the card for one small purchase each month. Maybe it's a tank of gas or just one trip to the grocery store or set up your you know, streaming service subscription to that particular card, right? It's you know, eight or nine or 10 bucks a month and then set up automatic uh, payments to pay that account on time, right? So let's say you set up a streaming service on that credit card. You have it automatically deduct from the credit card. And then on the, on the back end, you have your checking account, pay that, uh, pay that card on time uh, each month. You don't even have to use the credit card. You could put it away in a drawer somewhere. You're not tempted to use it at all, but it's establishing credit by showing a transaction, showing it paid on time each month. You don't have to carry a balance in order to show a good credit history with an account. So uh, if you have a card with a credit limit of $500, you don't have to carry a balance each month to show that you can manage the account. Better is use it and pay it in full each month. And that's just as good as if you were to carry a balance, actually even better because you have no utilization or low utilization on that particular account based on when that, that credit score is pulled. So that's just a simple tip there. Know that you don't have to, um, you know, carry a balance, just use it for something small, pay it on time. You're establishing credit right then and there. It's, it's really simple uh, to do that. Some additional tips uh, overall. Um, number one, automate payments for all of your debts, right? So maybe even things that aren't even reporting on the credit report, just get in the habit. Make sure your cell phone is paid on time. Make sure your rent is paid on time. Make sure, um, you know, the, these other things that may not be on the report, just get in the habit of automating those things so that you don't miss payments. Let the technology work for you. But then also, especially for the things that do report on the credit report, just automate those payments too. Uh, take yourself out of the equation. Uh, let the technology make it happen for you. Uh, secondly, keep accounts open. So once you've established, say, a, a credit card or something like that, 
maybe you're not using it consistently. Maybe you start to grow your credit profile. There's other you know things that you're doing with your credit. There's no need to close an account if you're not paying a monthly fee or I'm sorry, an annual fee. Um, you know, there's no reason to close that account. Just keep it open with a zero balance. Something to keep in mind there, though, is is some creditors, if you don't use your credit cards for a certain period of time, they consider it a dormant account and they may look to actually close that account. So um, once you establish a trade line, you obviously want to keep that account open to get the longest established history that you can. And if you need to periodically, again, just use a card here and there, pay it in full, just to keep it as an active account uh, overall. So uh, where you do have those accounts uh, established and open, just keep them open. Don't look to close accounts because closing accounts, it may be okay if you have a really strong profile, you can close an account, it's not gonna be a big, de big deal. But if you're looking to rebuild or to establish credit, you wanna keep those accounts open and keep them open as long as possible. And then third, don't overlook your budget. I've alluded to this a, a couple times in a few spots. The, the, our ability to pay on time, our ability to use credit wisely, it's actually all built upon our financial wellness and our financial health and handling of the day to day, right? So when I use a credit card in, in my situation, for example, I'm not using it because I need the, the credit to get by. I use the credit card just simply as a tool and for convenience, and I've already budgeted in what I'm paying for um, with that card. And so when I pay the bill, it's already in my budget, right? So I'm not going into debt by using my card because it's already budgeted for, it's already um, uh, taken care of. So make sure you're budgeting, make sure you're saving, make sure that your use of these tools is really for convenience and not for trying to help your situation, right? If you're using credit to get by, that's just gonna snowball if, if, if you don't have a really solid budget. So make sure you take a close look at your budget, learn more about how you like to budget, learn your habits, make sure you have a plan for, for making sure things do get paid on time. That'll be very important. Make sure you utilize different resources. I talked earlier about credit uh, building products that financial institutions may have. Park City Credit Union has a credit rebuilder program. So talk to the credit union that's specifically designed for members that want to rebuild their credit, right? It's right there in the name. Very straightforward. Talk to them about what that does, how it works, how it can help you with, with rebuilding your credit. Take full advantage of that. If you need uh, an account to kind of get things established or get things rebuilt, that's the easiest and simplest way to do it. So definitely talk to the credit union about that tool. The credit union also has uh, on their website something called a virtual coach. So uh, if you've never seen this before, if you go to the credit union's website, it's under the planning tab. You go all the way to the bottom, click on virtual coach. There's a whole page for this. And it's a, it's a, a coach where you chat with the, the coach virtually online. And it'll give you information about improving your credit. What are the factors in a credit score? So you can actually converse with this virtual coach to get tips, to get information, um, and get even follow-up nudges and touches about things that you may have chatted about you know, with that virtual coach. So take full advantage of that. That's specifically designed for you if you're looking to learn about improving your credit or learn how credit works this will give some of those details and a customized uh, conversation to you based on the information you're chatting about uh, with the virtual coach so again credit union's website under planning virtual coach click get started very simple and then you you talk with the coach at, at your pace as you as you uh, type through um, what you need there and then third is you can utilize GreenPath. Uh, as, as mentioned, I'm with GreenPath. We're, we're here to, for you as a, as a resource for, um, you know, as a member of the credit union. One of the things that we do uh, in all of our sessions, I, I believe I alluded to it earlier, is we provide a free and confidential financial assessment. Part of that assessment, we can actually access data from your TransUnion credit report for free. So if you give us permission, we can access the data uh, it's a soft pull, so it doesn't hurt your hurt your score. And what we're able to get there, we don't get the full report, we don't give you the score, but what we can get is the creditor balance and payment of items on your TransUnion report. 
and talk through what we see there, right? So what are the different trade lines? How are you managing those things? Do you have any concerns? What's your action plan for repaying these debts or cleaning up some, some things on your credit report? If we see that, we can give you a customized um, action plan for that, talk you through the specifics there so that you know exactly what to do next. All you have to do is call the toll-free number, Tell us you're a member of the the, uh, the credit union. We can start that conversation immediately. And, and that kind of conversation takes about 30 minutes. So feel free to call when it's convenient for you. You don't have to schedule an appointment. You call, we start the conversation and uh, get you your action plan uh, very quickly. Some takeaways uh, for you as we start to wrap this up. And if there are any questions, we can certainly, certainly tackle those. Uh, first uh, takeaway is Credit's a tool, right? So it's not good or bad. It's just a tool that, that helps us get through the use of financial products a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier for us. It's a little bit easier for the, for the financial institutions we're working with. Let's use that tool to our advantage, right? Let's understand how our credit works, make sure we're improving and maintaining a good score so that we get the best rates, so that we can save money, so that we can get the apartment that we want or get the mortgage or, you know, make sure we get the utility and, and not have to put down a security deposit. It's a great tool if we manage it well. It can also be a dangerous tool, right, if we're not managing it well. So let's use it to our advantage. And, and hopefully the information we shared today gives you a nice um, understanding of, of how that tool is built and what we can do uh, to, to leverage that with our situation. Uh, secondly, create a reminder to check your free credit report. Um, make sure you um, you know, know where to get it, which is annualcreditreport.com, and maybe set a reminder in your, you know, on your phone or on a calendar somewhere. Hey, once a year or a couple times a year, I'm going to go to annualcreditreport.com and make sure I check at least, you know, the three credit reports once a year uh, overall. The more familiar you are with these reports, it becomes second nature. So once you've checked it once or twice, it's real nice and easy to do. You can essentially be your own credit monitoring service because you'll know what you're looking for. Um, and so the familiarity of it will, will help you understand the big picture of credit uh, overall. And then takeaway number three is don't overcomplicate credit, right? What we talked about earlier, pay on time, keep paying down your balances, don't apply for too much too often. That's the name of the game with credit because those behaviors reflect what lenders want to see, what companies want to see when they're looking to work with you, which is you're paying things on time. You're not borrowing beyond your capacity to borrow. Um, you've got things under control. You've got a plan for things. That's all indicative of, of what they see in the, in the credit report. So don't overcomplicate it. Just keep it you know, straightforward, but just do those things consistently over time. Again, that's the hard part because life's happening. But if we can do that and just kind of stick to that plan, you'll be in great shape uh, overall. Uh, with that, we, we have time for questions. So I'll let, uh, you know, if anyone wants to put anything into chat or if we have any needs with that, we can we can address those. And uh, just a reminder, feel free to utilize GreenPath uh, as a member of the credit union. The, the credit union pays for our services. So as a nonprofit, uh, we depend on the credit union support. So they actually support us so we can support you. So thank you, Park City, for uh, for doing that. So check us out. Also check out the credit union's website, again, for the credit Rebuilder uh, product, um, other great products and services that they have as well to support you uh, in your journey. So with that, I'll uh, see if we have any questions and also uh, turn it back to Lisa. Well, thank you, Luke, and thank you for all the tips and information that you you shared. I know everyone will appreciate um, all the information that you shared. There's just so much when it comes to credit and credit scores and credit reports. Um, as Luke mentioned, we're now at the Q&A portion, so if you have a question, uh, feel free to type the question in the chat box for Luke. Uh, we did receive a couple questions in advance, so um, we'll, we'll start with those and then we'll look to the chat. And this first question is kind of a two-part question. Um, question reads, my husband has no credit and no previous income doing, um, due to him being disabled. Is there any way we can help him establish credit? And then the second part of that question, how do you go about establishing someone credit if they don't show up in the system? Yeah, so so read the second one again. Yeah, so the second part of the question is, how do you go about establishing someone credit if they don't show up in the system? Okay, yeah, so, so in both of these cases, uh, first, again, uh, 
someone only has a credit report if they have accounts or trade lines, you know, credit or debt accounts, or they have to manage the payment, right? So to get someone in the system, so to speak, or to get a credit report, they have to establish a trade line that's going to report on the credit report. So that would be, again, credit card, secured credit card, a credit builder product, a loan, um, where the creditor is actually going to report the amount owed, the payment history, all of that to the credit credit bureaus themselves. So, um, so if someone doesn't have, you know, income or or you know a credit history, it's just a matter of one. Why do you want to establish credit? I think that's an important question um, as we look at this. Uh, why do you want to establish credit? Are you looking to get something in the future? If so, what is it? When is it? That all from a from a a credit counselor perspective, that's what I would start to ask a little bit more to to dive a little bit deeper. Because if there's no need for credit in the future, there's not necessarily a need to establish it today, if that makes sense, right? But if someone is going to be needing that credit in the future, how do we start to get them there? Well, maybe there's not a, you know a strong income or or something along those lines. Well, maybe they could start with something like a secured credit card, right? They put the money aside, they use the the, the credit card merely just for convenience, and that's starting to establish the uh, establish the history. So someone with a, a fixed income or something like that, they get a secured credit card. They just use it to you know buy something at the store, buy the tank of gas, pay it on time each month. That's going to start to build a credit profile uh, very simply. And so same for the person, um, you know, to to get them in the system, so to speak. They just need to open a trade line that's going to start reporting on the credit report. But the, the big question I would have you start to look at if, if that's your situation is, you know, why do I want to establish the credit? What's the need for it? Um, and start to build your, your plan around the, the, the goal that you're trying to accomplish. The goal can sometimes dictate when and why and how some of the other details that, that could be looked at there. Great Our question. next question. Can spouses affect your own credit and how? Yeah, they, they can if you have joint accounts together. So two people getting married doesn't bring their credit reports together, right? Um, uh, a, an account only reports on both credit reports if it's a joint account. So when, when people sign on uh, accounts together. So uh, spouses, you know, may sign on the mortgage documentation and, and both have um, you know, equal responsibility for paying the mortgage. So it's only when you're, you're signing an account, um, you know, a joint account with somebody, will it affect both people. But if it's two independent people, they come together, they get married, that doesn't join their credit reports together. They still have their own individual accounts with their own individual responsibility. Um, it only hits the credit report when they've actually signed on the dotted line, so to speak. Um, it's also the same for a co-signer. So if you co-sign for somebody on a loan, it's going to be on the credit report of the person that you signed for. But you as co-signer, it's also on your credit report. So do know that if you do co-sign or someone co-signs for you, it's joint responsibility, essentially, uh, as far as how it shows on the on the credit report. So. Um, so as far as how can your, your your spouse affect your credit, let's say you get married, but you all have your own individual accounts. Your spouse doesn't make the great you know decisions as far as paying things on time. That's not going to affect you, per se, on your own credit report. Uh, it's going to be on each individual credit report. But that does or potentially could come into play. Let's say the, the credit history from their account uh, for their report isn't great, but yours is, but you go to do something together. Well, the lender is going to look at both credit reports if you're looking to sign jointly on something that that could have an impact. So before you sign on something together, especially with a, a spouse and you've had separate credit reports up to that point, maybe start asking each other questions. Hey, how is your credit score? How does your report look? Because if you go to sign something jointly at that point, the lender is going to look at both reports and make a decision based on what they see with both reports. And so you may want to decide, do we want to do this jointly or do we want to do it individually? You know, those are those are deeper conversations to have, certainly, but uh, it can come into play um, with with future lending that might be done. Uh, we have received a couple of questions on credit scores. I think the first one's very interesting, given the current um, housing market and how competitive it is. What credit score do you need to buy a house? 
Uh, that's going to depend on the mortgage product typically, right? So this is a good question for the lender uh, or the company that you're working with. Certain mortgage programs, say, you know, um, you know, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you know, programs or certain mortgage products may have a credit score requirement. So talk to the, you know, the, the mortgage loan officer to ask what are the requirements there? But typically, if you have a credit score, and this is very general, very, very general, but if you have a credit score of 620 and above, typically you can qualify for, for a mortgage in, in some capacity. But the question is, do you maybe want to wait to get your score a little bit higher to maybe get a better rate? Those are all things you want to take a look at in the decision-making process. I, I tell people this is just kind of Luke's benchmark, so so take it with a grain of salt. If you can, Get a credit score of 700 and above um, before you before you start to look for mortgages or car loans if you're able to. But you don't have to have a 700 credit score. If you're at about 620 and above, you, you can typically start that process. And the beauty of credit, which we we may not have talked about directly, but the beauty of this is as you apply the right principles over time, you can improve your score. So let's say you start your mortgage uh, journey with one credit score, right? You improve your score over time, maybe you're able to refinance and get a better rate at some point in the future. So um, if that's the goal for you, if, the, if, if a, buying a home is a goal for you, talk to your mortgage loan officer, obviously talk to the credit union about the different products and what, what score you would need there. And then your job, both now and, and even continuing into the future, do your best to keep getting that score up because that may provide some nice benefits down the line if you refinance. Another question on credit scores here. If you're 10 days late on your credit card payment, will that impact your credit score? It depends on how it's being reported by the creditor to the credit reporting agency. So um, most creditors have what they might call as a grace period, right? Where if you pay five days after the due date or 15 days after the due date, Maybe you'll pay a late fee, but maybe they won't report it late on the on that particular uh, credit report. So I can't tell you the exact time frame because that may vary by creditor. the The line of delineation there is um, when does the creditor report to the credit reporting agency that an account is late? Typically, that's thirty days past due. They'll show you as thirty days past due uh, on the credit report, but you know, what's our takeaway with that? Hey, if we can pay on time and avoid that late payment, you know, let's always try and do that. Um, don't don't try and, you know, get right up to the line without going over. Uh, let's try and pay that on time. Or as we talked about, automate the payments so they're always getting there before the due date. Now, is it the worst thing in the world if you have a late payment that does reflect on your credit report? It's not the end of the world. Again, you can always improve your credit after that if it does impact it, but, it's easier if we can just avoid it in the first place. So the, the preventative medicine is, is always better than the, the cure, especially in a case like this. What should you do if you see an error on your credit report and how do you fix it? Yeah, so depending on where you see it, you simply just have to contact that credit reporting agency. So when when you're given a copy of your credit report or when you pull a copy of your credit report, it's gonna tell you whether it's Experian, Equifax, or, or TransUnion, or, or maybe it's a poll of all three. Um, you just have to then contact the credit reporting agencies with a reason for the dispute. So um, what they'll do then, you know, let's say it shows as 30 days late, but you know you were never late. You just simply submit in writing typically, whether it's through the mail or if you're pulling your information through annualcreditreport.com, uh, you can typically dispute right there online. There, there are options to just click to dispute, you give a reason, and then the credit reporting agency will go back to the creditor and go through a dispute process. The creditor then has to either verify that the information is accurate or upon realizing their mistake, get it corrected and show it correctly on the credit report. That typically has a 30 day time frame in which the creditor has to respond uh, to that. But it's as simple as uh, where you see the, the incorrect information. So on which report you see the incorrect information, if it's one of them, contact the, that credit reporting agency. Or if you see it on all three, contact all three credit reporting agencies. They'll go through the dispute process with the creditor 
um, and then give a response on that. And then uh, in some cases, they may ask if, if you have any documentation to show why it's accurate on your end, if it differs from what the creditor says. You also have options to submit additional documentation, things like that, if you need to. All right, and looks like that's all the questions that I'm seeing. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, Luke, any final words you'd like to leave everyone with? Yeah, I'll leave uh, uh, with the, the line of don't make it too complicated. Like most things, it's, it's usually pretty simple. With budgeting, it's live within your means. With credit, it's if you can, pay your bills on time and just keep paying those balances down. So simple, simple game. Um, hard to play sometimes, but a simple game in theory. So um, I wish you all success with that. Let, let, let Green Path know if you have any questions. Certainly use resources of the credit union. You got a lot of people supporting you in this journey. Take full advantage uh, of those resources. Well, thank you again, Luke, for joining our Northwoods Financial Series and sharing all the wonderful information. And I want to thank all of you for attending today's Northwoods Financial Series session. Our next session will take place on Tuesday, October 26th. Uh, October is Pre Fire Prevention Month, and a local fire department will be sharing uh, fire safety tips with us. <laughs> we'll be sharing more details about that session soon, so just stay tuned to the Park City Credit Union website and our social media pages for updates. So with that, I want to thank everyone again for attending, and we hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.